welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Bobby, and if you are returning, thank you very much for being here. Um, I know this is going to be a little bit different than what I usually do, but I am on a warpath with BoxyCharm right now, so I decided to read a little bit from the r slash BoxyCharm um, subreddit. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy this and let's get right into it. So this is cross posted um, by user Ann Intel. The title is Reporting BoxyCharm and Fascia Beauty, a summary for those in the USA, cross posted from r slash beauty boxes. Reporting BoxyCharm, BoxyCharm and Fascia Beauty, a summary for those in the USA. Feel misled by BoxyCharm or Fascia? Want to do something about it but aren't sure where to start? I was planning on writing this up over the weekend with some more information. After seeing champagne taste on a beer budgets video regarding fascia and also the action that the fashionista box is taking towards fascia, I decided maybe it was best to write something up real quick. So the links are readily available to anyone who would like to file a complaint with the fascia slash boxy charm. These are only USA based and I do not have consumer knowledge in Canada. I will list the following organizations I have researched and a short description of what to write in your complaint and for which company. The exception to this is Leaping Bunny, who I have reached out to but have yet to hear a response back regarding um, the complaints, complaint submission. I'm not a lawyer or associated with any consumer law. This is just plain internet research and past experience from being a consumer. BoxyCharm and Fascia are separate entities. Reporting both of them will take a bit of legwork but I will try to assist anyone who has questions. Some of these sites are appropriate for Fascia and some are more appropriate for Boxy. I would not suggest reporting the parent company at this time as there is just not enough information yet to know where they're purchasing all their products from. I mean, we know, but we need actual evidence in order for these organizations to care. When filing your complaint, when asked, please include as much information that is factual as possible. Try not to get emotional and stick to the facts. That is all the people reading these emails care about. I hope this helps anyone looking to take the extra steps to report them. This is all information publicly available on the internet. If anyone has any statements on specifically what someone should say, please comment. I'm not great at wording sometimes, so I am just typing this up as a summary of resources with minimal information other than that. Okay, let's start. That was the preamble. So. There's um, there's websites and contact information for Fascia Skin and for Boxy Charm. There's links to report Fascia Skin and or Boxy Charm to the FDA, the FTC, Leaping Bunny, Better Business Bureau, um, New Jersey Division of Consumer Affairs, Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Um, and then, because BoxyCharm is based out of Florida, and I'm pretty sure that Fascia Beauty is uh, based in New Jersey. So it says there are no guarantees that any of this will work, but there are enough complaints that to one entity or another, there is a higher probability. And this is what I've been saying. Like, in my last video, I don't know if you, I don't know if you watched my last video, but I said, if you share, share the videos, it's the only way. That, that these companies are going to pay attention is to spread this. They have PR teams and they, their PR teams need to be paying attention to this stuff. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about with the BoxyCharm slash Fascia thing, I guess there was a 24 karat gold like product that was by Fascia Skin and the, this month's BoxyCharm and there was some questionable um, ethics um questionable authenticity about about the product so um honestly i think people are just really getting sick of these companies taking advantage of us and i love that there are people doing the research and um you know helping out others who are in this same predicament here's a follow-up it's uh, posted by user Ann Ann Nichelle. Oh, that noise was posted by user Ann Nichelle, and it looks like it's cross-posted from r slash beauty boxes. 
and there is a link and it's an Instagram link. The statement says, since the launch of our fascia skin, there have been many comments questioning the validity of the brand. This is to address the concern that some people have had with fascia skin 24K moisturizer. Our product is produced via a parent company, DLS Cosmetics, a multi-brand importer and manufacturer. DLS has many overseas manufacturing partners, facilities that are selected through very stringent practices. All DLS factories have international good practice certifications. They all utilize FDA approved ingredients. They need and must operate in a sanitized environment. All factories must employ adult workers. All factories must not and do not test ingredients or products on animals. And so somebody um, in the comments, a user by the name Tam223, um, commented, watched champagne taste in a beer budget's YouTube video comparing the fascia cream to the one from Alibaba and the box is slightly different to get rid of the scanner bar that shows when scanned the name of the Chinese lab that made it. Lies, lies, and more lies. Shame on you. Now I want nothing to do with Bang, Luna, DLS, Steve Lauren items either. This is a $1.70 cream that could well be dangerous. So that's concerning. So if you guys are putting this on your face, I don't know, you might want to wait a minute and, and follow this because um, it's your face. You don't want to F it up. This one's a gym face uh, posted by user uh, getmonet23. When I tell BoxyCharm that I'm super fair and then open my box to find self-tanner drops. Dude, I feel ya. So apparently, apparently the, the person, I gotta look into this a little bit more. This, the same Anne Nichelle girl who posted the thing about the, um, you know, the thing about the, um, the fascia skin cream. A she owns basic beauty too. The domain search shows DLS slash Emanuelo re registered basic beauty featured in Ipsy glossy box and boxy charm. It never ends. It's interesting. Somebody else said it. It's interesting to me that she's chosen to create so many different brands this way. From a business perspective, one would think it would be easier to market these imports under one brand name instead of creating different names that sell just a few items here and there. Like, why not just market all of her makeup under DLS? Fair enough. Um, Alex in Wonderland 617 says, I thought the same thing. Do you think it could possibly be so that her items are in beauty boxes more often? Meaning after a DLS eyeliner and box charm and Ipsy, how many more times do customers really want any more DLS products? So she creates other brands that seem to be filler items, sometimes on a monthly basis between boxes. A Luna by Luna lip gloss here and a Steve Laurent highlighter there. And there's no one complaining about why are we always getting over a tart by bodyography, etc. And uh, Pepto D, Pepto Dismal. <laughs> you guys with your freaking usernames, I swear to God. Pepto Dismal says, I think you just hit the nail right on the head. To avoid customers complaining about brand fatigue, let's just create a bunch of different company names, all under the same umbrella for filler items and hope no one ever figures it out. I realize a lot of big companies are subsidiaries of mega companies like L'Oreal, but this is not the same thing. What DLS and friends, parentheses, fiends, question mark, are doing is pretty much just drop shipping from Alibaba, except they paid a bit extra to slap their name on the label, then went through a middleman, subscription boxes, to get the crap straight to our doorstep. Now, what we know, now that we know what's going on and which brands fall under the DLS umbrella, it'll be really interesting to see how sub boxes are handling things going forward. I agree. Um, dumb, dumb girls beep. That's the user who commented this. I I think this is exactly it. 
boxes need variety and honestly it's why every time I see these brands I've literally never heard of I roll my eyes and move on. I'm older and I remember junk brands from the 80s that were only sold in beauty supply stores and these are the same junky quality. Even the name sounds the same lol. Own Cauliflower says at least those tiny brands adhere to American manufacturing standards. That's a step up from this as far as I'm concerned. This is a rabbit hole you guys. And Nichelle comments again. Um, I honestly feel like there's a bigger story here. Almost all the sub boxes have been using her different companies to fill boxes for years. No way they didn't know. I just want to shout about it from the rooftop, but there's no one there to hear me, lol. Well, sweetie, we are here. We are hearing you. Reddit hears you. YouTube hears you. I mean, this has been being discussed, like, a lot and ever since this box came out. I don't know, maybe before it. I don't know, but I've been really hearing about it just since this box came out. Um, somebody else says, I'm so suspicious now of all those unknown brands we have received in boxes. What about the Queen Lip Gloss from this month's box? Still have the swatch of that on my hand. <laughs> um... What about the Queen lip gloss from this box, lens box? Bodyography, jante blue, appeal, etc. And Anne Nichelle responds, exactly. Looked all those up and their domains are private. So I can't link it that way. I wish we knew how to find out how many companies are under DLS. And uh, May, Mayvora06 says, same. Some people complain about always getting the same big brands like Tarte. But I'd rather get a Tarte product every month than an unknown that risks all this crap that's going on. I'm not afraid to put tart on my face at all, but any brand I've never heard of, I worry about and often end up giving away. That's a good point. Um, Epad Mini says this shit is never ending. That highlighter palette looked so cheap I sold it for cheap. At least you sold it, man. Got, got a little bit of money back. Um, somebody else says, P, uh, the user is called PM me your lock screen. I'm not even interested in the mainstream beauty boxes anymore. If I wanted this sort of quality, I would go to Always May or the dollar store for a fraction of the price. I really like some of these boxes, but I signed up for these boxes to try out high-end brands that used to be the selling point. And then KGGCJG says, yep, I signed up for a monthly box curated for me with high-end brands and getting a great value. I've been given garbage in a box and paying $25 or so a month, depending on the subscription. BoxyCharm fucked up six out of 12 products for me and said, and I was told, sorry, you didn't like your BoxyCharm. Just give anything you don't like to family or friends. Who am I buying this box for? Me? And BoxyCharm can't figure out a brand brunette has no use for blonde products as a company. Like I told BoxyCharm, I could go into TJ Maxx blindfolded and especially curate a better box for myself and cheaper. Um, Emerald Dahlia says, I swear to God, I have a hunch that if we keep digging, it will come out that Emanuela is actually Yosef's drag persona, persona, shocked gasps. <sighs> no one cares at all, says, and she would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids. <laughs> uh, let me see what else we got here. Uh, there's a link here um, by Minapple79. Um, it says she also owns Luna by Luna, Steve Laurent, and Bang Beauty, which w we talked about a few minutes ago. And there's a link here. I'm going to click it. And it goes to a story on evolvingbeauty.info. I've never heard of this website, so take it with a grain of salt. I don't know if it's um, a trusted site or if it's not, so... This was actually written at the end of 2017. Emanuela de Falco, The Mind of a Millennial Beauty Millionaire. Um, and this basically says, um, The Garden State native evolved as a rebellious middle child, poised with a passion for beauty. It was a passion that Emanuela used to convince her father to loan her 10 grand to create a multi-million dollar beauty empire, primarily via subscription boxes, social media, intuition, and e-commerce in four short years. Dirty little secret cosmetics and sister brands sell to over 3 million people internationally every year. 
DeFalco is a young, smart, and steadfast. She is now a woman in motion and evolving beauty. God, they are really kissing her ass. Um, yeah, yeah. She's a sorority girl and cheerleader, business Markham college graduate. Uh, where did she graduate from? It just says business Markham. Uh, first becoming a professional makeup artist after several years of failed marketing jobs. Then Emanuela was a freelance MUA for three years while building DSL in her subsequent beauty empire. Uh, Dirty Little Secrets, Luna by Luna, Bang Beauty, Steve Laurent. And it's Dirty Little Secrets and Sister Brands. So all these brands together are selling to over 3 million people internationally every year. Yeah, there's a bunch of information here that that we already know. So, do you think Joseph at BoxyCharm will address this on IG? Um, says Ying Yang 2000 And a freaky monster says, I doubt it. He reached out to someone who said they planned on making a video about the situation and said he'd answer any questions she had. Yet, when she emailed him questions, he didn't really answer anything. Her name is Elizabeth, but I don't know her YouTube channel. I caught this info from an, an IG live stream with Here for the Tea. Apparently, the owner of Fascia is also threatening people on IG by claiming they have users' IP addresses and asked one girl, do you want me to meet at your P.O. box or your address? Wild shit. If I can screenshot it, I'll edit my comment and add it. Um, here is a screenshot that the person threatened posted. Okay, so here's another letter, guys. Um, it's posted by user Ramble Queen, and it's titled Cancellation Letter. And it says, I have two boxy accounts. Canceled one today. In parentheses, she puts, I was planning on it anyway. And I decided to voice my opinion on the current affairs in their comment box. Just thought I'd share, which we appreciate. Um, I love my box and got some great gifts from my mom. That being said, I'm beginning to worry about the quality of the products being offered. I understand the company needs to make a profit, but fear at what cost that may come to the consumer. I know I'm not a premium subscriber, nor have I been interested in being one, but the whole fascia stuff seems super sketch. I would much rather see a box with a lower retail value and items like Pixie by Petra, NYX, or ELF as filler items than overinflated retail values by shady companies that could be providing unsafe products. Girl, same. Um, I understand these brands wouldn't be considered premium, but I don't feel fascia should be either. Maybe if there's a problem providing quality products at that price point, that level should be eliminated. This fiasco has caused myself as well as many others to start to question the quality and safety of the many other products and brands we are receiving in all box levels. 96% upvoted because so true. Um, yeah, I think this kind of thing has started to happen when they started introducing more levels. Um, one could say it's a cash grab, you know, adding the new levels. Um, I, the boxy charm is getting a little too big for its britches. And I know that's a very old saying, but, um, but in this case, I feel it's apt because, again, they're like exactly what this letter says. They are introducing more levels, new levels. As people sign up for them, they've got to fulfill the orders. So what are they doing? They're desperately scrambling to, to get companies to sign on that may not be super vetted. So let's check out what the comments see, say. Uh, Lucy183 said, I did a similar letter in the comments when I canceled my three boxes yesterday. I'm fine with trying new things and lesser known brands, but the shady handling of the last few issues they were called out on made me decide I want to spend my money elsewhere. Got nothing to say to that because I agree. Uh, I can't pronounce this username. It's K-W-I-D-I-T-I-I. I'm questioning lesser known brands now completely unless they are sold somewhere else besides their own online store, or it's really clear they're making the products themselves. There's a good possibility that it's just a reseller front 
like Vastia and all her other cosmetics companies, Dirty Little Secrets, Luna by Luna, Steve Laurent, Bang Beauty are. She buys stuff from China, has her label put on them, and then sells the majority of it to sub boxes. That is her business model. That makes it look like subscribers are getting a variety of cosmetics to try and companies to notice. But in fact, that stuff is just cheap filler. Anybody could buy on Amazon, Amazon, AliExpress for much less. Sub boxes have got to know that. It's a cheat, a lie. Uh, Joanne J. 1974 says, I was wondering why she kept creating different brand names and this makes perfect sense. I saw her being interviewed in a YouTube video from 2018 and she actually admits this is an e-commerce business and at that time had five companies. She admitted to ordering from manufacturers and reselling on her Instagram. She said she is in all the big beauty boxes and had been from the start, including BoxyCharm and Ipsy. So now we're dragging Ipsy into this too. I'm guessing they use her as a middleman so they wouldn't get caught ordering directly from the manufacturer themselves. I suspected this was going on a long time ago and got proof when I emailed Illuminati and asked if I could get a discount on their $21 sponge if I ordered 1000 They immediately replied, yes, $5 each. BoxyCharm likely ordered over $1 million. I think that's either 100000 or $1 million. There's, I don't know, I think it's... The commas are in the wrong spot. Um, so I'm guessing they paid under 50 cents each. It's still the only item they sell and is going to be in future boxes too. In reality, BoxyCharm and likely most other beauty subscription boxes are liquidation and marketing companies. They make money on the real, not old items we get because they only pay the manufacturing costs. Joe admitted this. And if you guys saw the Instagram story where Joe did say that, um, it was kind of a convoluted answer. I'll try to dig it up and link it. I, no promises, but I will try. Um, so Joe admitted this, which is likely less than 10% of the retail price. Companies spend a lot of advertising, a lot on advertising, i.e. benefit spent $10 million to advertise one mascara. To be fair, benefit also took a shitload of influencers to freaking Hawaii or whatever it was just to promote that mascara. Um, an, an example of filler item profits. Illuminati sponges cost 50 cents, probably less, and we pay $5 per item, which means a profit of $4.50 for each box for that one item. Times that by 1 million, and the profit is 4.5 million for that one item alone. Look at all the filler items that have a red flag website and little to no social media. It was set up solely for the subscription box customers who are suspicious. So it's like a CYA thing, you know, like, oh, people are starting to look into us. We better hurry up and build a, a fucking drag and drop website to look legit. Um, in the case of the owner of Fascia, she explained the subscription boxes front and her, the subscription boxes front her money in advance so she can order massive quantities. And then, so Ramble Queen, um, which is the OP, says, uh, just went to Illuminati website, saw the pre-order lip glosses, Googled Crown Lip on Alibaba, and the same container came right up. I know it's just a container, but I guess I expect rapid places to make slash get their stuff elsewhere. I don't know. It's a mess for sure. And that is yeah, I'm a little concerned. I'm a little concerned because I've been a BoxyCharm subscriber for a couple years now and I I have loved getting my BoxyCharms. It's been something I look forward to every month, especially BoxyLux months. Um, but yeah, like the past few months, I mean, since they introduced, I think it's since they introduced the premium, I have noticed a, a definite uptick in um suspicious behavior maybe or just like questionable items um again their customer service has definitely slipped i used to be able to get a response from them and you know just for questions or whatever and now i can't get a fucking response from them no matter what platform i've used like all the platforms and they won't respond to me it's <sighs> 
it's not a good experience for a paying customer, for a loyal customer. I even tweeted them and called them out and be like, dude, can I please get an acknowledgement from you? Like I've been a customer even through all these rumors of duping and all this. Like I called their asses out, but I wasn't rude. I was just like, listen, I have been this customer, you know, for X amount of time and I would really appreciate at least an email or a, a DM. Like, can you do that? And so this one was posted in r slash boxycharm by user uh, kseattle1. A girl messaged me and shared what fascia skin moisturizer did to her face, sharing with her permission. I will link the screenshots of our conversation. Please don't use it on your face. This is what untested products from China can do. And take a look at this girl's face. That is terrifying. This is why people are concerned about putting stuff on their face from brands that they've never heard of. I just noticed this little thing on my ponytail sticking up. Just call me Alfalfa from now on. Um, so in the responses, the book and makeup lover says, please send the girl our love and support. No one thinks that she's stupid or silly trying a product that came from a source that she trusted. It's a source that adults have trusted, and I'm sure that at least a few other people will have tried it as well. Uh, Cassia later says, if you are reading this, please do me a huge favor. Always spot test skincare or any new facial item under your chin before you use it all over your face. Even if it is a well-known luxury brand, it can still cause you problems. Also, OP, can you please tell this woman that it might help to use some plain vitamin E oil to rehydrate all the dry packs, patches she's going to get? That, that helped me when I got burns from retinol. Okay, and so OP posted the screenshots of their conversation. And um, it's, it's, some screen, it's some screenshots that are found on Imager. And I'll, I'll put this link in the description below. Um, so the first one says, hi, oh, this is Jane Doe, uh, 908, blah, 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 blah. So the user, the OP says, hey, I'm the one who messaged you on Reddit. These pictures are really unflattering and I don't want them getting out with my name. Please keep this anonymous and not share my Reddit or my profile here. So this is the girl who, so of course I'll block out all of your information and keep everything attached to your name private. Thank you, OP. That's really nice of you to uh, respect your privacy. We've had enough doxing incidences lately. Um, thank you for coming forward with this. Hopefully people will keep this moisturizer away from their faces. Also, do you mind if I share screenshots? I'll block out your username. Um, and then the girl sent some, some more pictures. And the OP says, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry that this happened to you. Um, the girl says, yeah, you can share these. It's fine. Um... Boxy char uh, OP says BoxyCharm and Fascia Skin need to be held responsible for putting the moisturizer in their box. I hope your skin heals fast. Please let me know if your mom gets an email back from BoxyCharm. So apparently the girl's mom emailed them and was like, dude, like my daughter, look at my daughter's face from your product. What the fuck? So guys, guys, if you're getting this Fascia Skin um, item, my advice, and I know I'm repeating myself, but my advice for now, do not put that stuff on your skin. This is untested, clearly. It, either it's untested or it's just a cheap dupe. I don't know. But the fact, even if it is just an allergic reaction, which which we will definitely be keeping our eyes and ears out. If it's if it's just an allergic reaction and the girl's just allergic to one of the ingredients, shit happens. You know what I mean? Like, it sucks. It definitely sucks. Um, but sometimes we don't know we're allergic to ingredients until we put them on our face and they burn our faces off. That's why you do a spot, a spot check, um, like a 24-hour patch test, kind of like you do when you do, like, box hair dye or something like that. I don't, do they still do that? Anyway, um... Let's, we're just going to keep our eyes for new, new developments on that. Um, but God, that poor girl. Girl, if you are watching this, 
<sighs> girl i'm so sorry this is, this is nuts and now i'm kind of glad i didn't get that premium box this month um, so that was a crazy little rabbit hole there um I'm going to go ahead and keep researching this and I'll let you guys know like what else comes up. So look for part two of this if you are interested in this whole BoxyCharm debacle. Um, so um, please like this video. Please make sure you're subscribed. I am trying to build a little community and I'm just having a rough go of it. So I'm really, really trying here. If you guys have suggestions, please, please, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, tell me what you think about this whole thing about the um, BoxyCharm products and th them being uh, inauthentic, dupes, whatever. The customer service. Are you getting decent customer service? So yeah, look for another part of this video. I'm going to dig into it and I'm going to get back with you guys with more information. All right. Thanks for watching. Please, again, like, subscribe. Um, follow me on IG. I post some bullshit on there sometimes. I, uh, I'm trying to get more into Twitter. So if you guys will follow me on Twitter, I'll get a little more involved in Twitter. I usually just lurk, but, <laughs> but I will get more involved in Twitter if you guys want to follow me. Um, what else? I think that is it. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Just a quick note I found when editing, um, apparently the February box was sent out with the incorrect information on the insert card. So a lot of people are getting emails from BoxyCharm with a corrected insert card. I don't know how that happened, why that happened, or whatever, but um, it just kind of adds to all the stuff that they are clearly not paying enough attention to when putting this stuff together. That's all.